Welcome to the third episode of Kenyan Athletics, Gambier and Beyond. With competition on hold for the moment, we thought you'd want to hear what your favorite student athletes are up to. My name is Jordi Fee Platt, and I'll be your host this fall. Each week, I'll be interviewing two players from one of the Kenyan fall sports teams, one underclassman currently on campus and one upperclassman studying remotely. This week, I will be talking to two members of the volleyball team. Ellie Luciani is a junior from Flowery Ranch, Georgia. Last season, she played in 25 of 29 matches and was third on the team in digs. In a match against Oberlin, she recorded 28 of Kenyon's 71 digs. Ellie, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. Maya Sapsford is a sophomore from Washington, D.C. As a freshman, she played 23 of 29 matches and recorded 91 digs, good for six on the team. Maya, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'll start with you, Ellie. Uh, what's your situation uh, remotely? Are you living with teammates or are you at home right now? Yeah, so I'm living with my parents currently. We actually just moved. So that's been kind of a nice change to get out of my childhood bedroom. So that's been good. And I'm looking forward to in the next weeks going up to Vermont to see some of my other teammates who are um, off campus. So I'm really excited to get to see people in person. Awesome. Yeah. Are you, um, what sort of workouts are you doing on your own? And then I'm sure it'll be very helpful to be with your teammates to do maybe some, some practicing, small group practicing with them. Yeah. So I live in Georgia, so our state is pretty open right now. Um, I actually have a job coaching volleyball, so that's been a great wow. way to stay in shape and just be with little kids and fall in love with the sport all over again. That's been amazing. And I've been really working on my conditioning because I think this is like a great opportunity to improve the lung capacity a little bit. So I've been actually playing a good amount and then going for little runs and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. And um, Maya, what's uh, the workout regimen been like on campus? Are you starting to practice in small groups um, or is it, has it been challenging? I'm sure it has. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, we actually started phase two practicing on Monday, meaning that we're finally allowed to share some equipment. Phase one was definitely kind of difficult. It was a lot of like individual skill work, a lot of passing to ourselves and against the wall, because at that point we were not allowed to share any equipment. Right. Uh, but it was also kind of nice, you know, a lot of us haven't gotten the opportunity to play in a, like six months. So it's, it's almost nice to kind of get back to basics and be able to kind of slowly progress into things. But um, as a phase two, we're finally allowed to pass to each other. We are like wearing our masks in the gym, which can get, makes the cardio a little more difficult when you're breathing yeah. through a mask, but we have to do what we have to do. Um, but it's super fun getting to know Coach Rowe um, and finally being able to play some volleyball again. It's definitely nice to have that sense of normalcy. Right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and um, with some of you away from campus and um some of you um, on campus. Uh, how are you all keeping uh, in contact and sort of maintaining the team chemistry? Um, it's definitely been tough not having our upperclassmen here. I know, especially for my class, we went from the youngest kids on campus to the oldest. Um, right. As of right now, our coach is organizing little coffee date things. So she's going to assign us to catch up with one teammate a week throughout the rest of the semester. So I'm really excited to do that. Um, otherwise, it's kind of just been up to us individually to check in on our teammates who aren't here. Um, but I would say we're all pretty close. So that's been happening a good amount. I know a lot of upperclassmen are making efforts to try to get to know our freshmen and um, be engaged as much as possible, as much as we're allowed to right now. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely been weird not being able to see these girls every single day, like 24 seven. Um, it's been an adjustment for sure. But I think even just something as simple as like sending a TikTok to someone that reminded you of them, like means a lot. And it's just a little bit of intentionality to the relationship that you didn't have to do before. And I think it's, it puts more significance on it sometimes when you have to think about, oh, this reminds me of someone, let me connect with them it's not accidental anymore. Like I sent Maya TikTok about cows the other day. <laughs> nice, yeah. No, it's, it really forces you this period to like put in effort to really um, maintain those connections, which is in the long run, I think a really good thing. Um, and uh, so Maya, what have you been doing? Um, what's off on campus life been like? Um, are you 
sort of socializing with the team in small groups or how have you been managing um, all the restrictions? Yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely very different than normal, but I think we're all just very grateful to be here. So we're like making an effort to try to interact with each other as much as we can while still following the rules. We're pretty lucky to have full volleyball. Our team is quite small. Um, we have 10 girls here right now. So we're all allowed to all be in the gym at once, which is really awesome. Um, and in terms of outside of practice, like the most we can really do is like get team dinners at Pierce after after practice. But, you know, with the plexiglass and stuff, it's really only six people to a table. So there's no right. more squishing everyone into one table. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's mostly just like hanging out outside. We try to like break it up so our freshmen can hang out with like each of us sophomores kind of in smaller groups and like go around to people's houses since we all can't be in one place at once. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting creative. Yeah, it's it's so hard for us to imagine what it's like there, like all the people at home, because I I just like imagining the plexiglass and Pierce and all this, <laughs> these restraints. It's just, it's crazy to think about. So it's really cool that, to hear um, how people are experiencing it. Um, what are you both looking forward to doing when everyone is back on campus, the whole team? I'm so excited to meet the freshmen. Um, I FaceTimed with them a couple times. They're amazing. Um, we do like text and stuff, but I literally have no idea really how tall they are. I have no like image in my head of what these people really look like. So I'm really excited to just like give everyone a big hug and finally be together again. I'm also really excited to meet Coach Rowe for real. So there's a lot of newness going on and it's hard to be so separate from it. So I'm really excited to just like have a giant group hug and finally meet the people that I feel like I'm getting to know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's, it would mostly just be about like us all hanging out, being able to play together again. I think we're definitely missing the energy of the upperclassmen this semester. Um, also like going to team lift would be so fun right now, but it's just not something that's going to happen. But I really miss the energy on like max lift day when everyone's around you like, yelling at you um cheering you on so it's just those times where we all get to be in one big group that we're really missing this semester right yeah um when the team does end up um uh, back on the court uh what areas of the team do you think um will improve the most from last season it will be probably two seasons removed but last season that's a good question. I don't know. I think this semester we've really been able to work on our individual skills so far, especially not being able to pass the ball so to each other until this week. So it's it's been a lot of just like focusing on yourself and your own growth. I think something that's going to be hard is like getting back into the chemistry of playing together. Um, I think that stuff comes back pretty quick, though, just like knowing what kind of sets people like where they want the ball passed. Um, so that'll definitely be something to work on. But yeah, I think we're all just working on our own bodies and like improving our own game this semester. And it'll be really awesome to see how it looks when we all come together. And I know our upperclassmen off campus are also working really hard, just trying to get stronger and do everything they can outside of the gym. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of the best possible timing. If you're gonna have a pandemic where you can't compete, it's kind of the best timing to bring in a new coach and let her kind of rip out everything to the foundations and build up the legacy that she wants and the program that she sees us having. So I think this is a really good opportunity. We don't have to worry about playing nationally ranked teams in a week with a new coach. We can worry about us and what foundations she wants to build. So wow. I think that's a really good opportunity. Obviously it's not ideal, but if anything's going to happen, I think this is the best timing to bring someone new in and like start a new program on a really solid note. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I know definitely one of the themes and what what has been going on in the gym the past couple of weeks has just been conversation about what we want this program to be moving forward. And I think this obstacle has really helped us figure out how strong we are and what we want to stand for in the future, um, especially with a new coach, just talking about what we want the program to look like has definitely be, been super relevant. So I think we're all also excited to see how the upperclassmen contribute to that and how they want things to look as well. Yeah, it seems like the team has a really great outlook um, on this situation, which is, which is great. Um, 
And uh, we are definitely looking forward to seeing you guys on the court uh, when the season does begin. Um, but now we're going to transition to some trivia. So the first section will pit you both against each other. Um, there will be two, there'll be four total questions on Kenyan athletics history, um, two for each of you. Uh, each question is worth one point each. Um, I'm going to start with you, Ellie. Um, how many NCAC titles has the Kenyan volleyball team won all time? A, zero, B, two, C, four, or D, five? This is gonna be so embarrassing, but I think <laughs> it's zero. That is incorrect. Oh, dang. The answer is two, um, so <laughs> better than you thought. Um, okay, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay, this is for you, Maya. Um, question two, who was second on the Kenyan volleyball team in kills last season? Second, Haley Witchie, B, Mackenzie Bruzio, C, C, Elise Davidson, or D, Malia Miller? M Haley? That is correct. Nice wow. job. <laughs> All right, um, question three. What was the Kenyan women's last Kenyan women's team to win uh, the NCAC title? A volleyball, B cross country, C basketball, or D field hockey? Field hockey. Yes, last season. Correct. Nice job. Okay, okay. that was going to be additionally embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Maya, this is for um, the victory in the individual portion. Um, where did Coach Rowe coach before Kenyan? A, Wittenberg, B, Wooster, C, Denison, or D, Oberlin? Denison. That is correct. All right, Maya is the individual champion. And now we're gonna transition to some group trivia. Mm -hmm. um, so there'll be three questions on uh, volleyball as a whole. Uh, the football team got uh, two out of three right and the women's soccer team got three out of three right. So you'll have to match them um, with this. Uh, who won the 2019 Division I volleyball title? Stanford. That is correct. Nice. One okay. for one. Okay. Um, which Lauren country... would kill me if I got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, which country has the most gold medals in beach volleyball? It's the U.S. or Brazil? It is. It's one of those two. Yeah. You got this, Ellie. This I don't know. I think I think <laughs> Misty May and Carrie ran away with it for a while. I'm gonna yeah. say the U.S. That is incorrect. Dang. Unfortunately, it is Brazil. <laughs> Very close. Um, and then, basically, you basically said it. Um, but who is the all-time leader in career wins in beach volleyball? Carrie. Yes, mm -hmm. that is correct. Nice. Okay, two out of three. Um, thank you both so much for coming on the podcast. That's all for this week. Thanks to everyone for listening, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you.